Hello guys and girls, in this video we're gonna take a look at how to post data to an API using React Native. Uh, so go ahead and create a new React Native project and remove everything except the import statements up here. If you don't know how to create a basic React Native project, uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description which you can, which you can uh, take a look at. Alright, so then go ahead and open up app.js, remove everything except the import statements up here. So we're gonna create this basic application which posts data to an API. We're not gonna create the API ourselves. Instead, we're gonna use this uh, web service here uh, called webhook.site, which lets us do some simple uh, API posting just for development purposes. So go ahead and open up webhook.site. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. And this is gonna be the URL endpoint we're gonna use to post data to, all right? So you can go ahead and copy this to your clipboard right now. And we're gonna create a class-based component. So let's go ahead and create, uh, export the full class. Let's call this app. And it should extend react.component. We're gonna define a component in mount lifecycle method here, in which we're gonna do the actual API call. So the API call will uh, take place automatically uh, when the app, this component app.js is loaded, all right? We're also gonna add a render method here. Uh, and let's just go ahead and return a simple view like that. So we're not actually gonna do anything with this view we're just adding in here. So React Native won't complain that it's not returning anything in the render. So we're gonna use fetch for this um, and do a simple post. So we're gonna use something called oops. Uh, try catch, which is a really good way of handling errors in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and define this first. So try catch, and in case of an error, let's just do console.log e for error, all right? And in the try statement here, we're gonna do the fetch. So if the fetch fails, this will be called and we will get an error console, all right? So we're gonna say await fetch. Now this is the reason we're using the async keyword here for the component in mount method, because we're gonna use the await keyword here and the await keyword requires, as of today, uh, the async keyword, all right? Now let's go ahead and copy the uh, URL. We just, uh, oh sorry, paste the URL we just copied from site, which is gonna be the API endpoint. Then create an object. So fetch first parameter is the actual API URL or API endpoint. The second parameter or argument is an object in which where we define what we want to post, uh, headers and rules for that. All right, so we're gonna add a method here. And since it's a post, we're gonna say post simply we're also going to set the mode to no course to avoid a couple of errors that we're going to get with uh, this webhook.site if we don't. I'm going to add headers. The first header, headers by the way is an object. The first header is accept. I'm going to set it to application slash JSON. So the accept is the uh, what kind of data type we uh, accept as a response. In this uh, case, we're accepting application slash JSON, right? Then we're gonna add content type and same here, application slash JSON. So the content type, uh, capital T. The content type uh, lets the server know uh, what kind of data we are sending to the server. And in this case, we're gonna add a simple JSON object 
So application JSON works fine for this case. Then we're gonna add a body. So the body is gonna contain uh, the actual JSON uh, that we want to send in a stringified format, all right? We're gonna say JSON.stringify, which is a function or method. Passes, pass in an object, which is the JSON object. Now we can add what kind of properties we want here. For example, for a login form, it would look something like that. All right, so username and a password. Um, let's start up by sending a username to the API. So if you hit save now, uh, your app is going to reload and this method will be called automatically. So let's keep a look here. So let's hit save. And let's see if we get any requests. No, no requests. Let's see if we get any errors. Something is wrong. Let's see here. So then accept content type. We're setting the body. And we're returning the view. Export the full class app extends react.component. Let's just see what happens if we did like this. See if we can check what the error is. Hmm. What is it complaining about? Let's try to restart it. I'm not sh quite sure what's happening here. Let's see if we get any errors now. Nope. All right, so something else went wrong with my React Native server running here locally on my client. Uh, so you shouldn't have that problem. All right, so now we just hit save again. So let's continue, Lo open up webhook.site. And we should be getting a request, but, oh, no, just, sorry. Uh, React Native is not reloading because I'm not making any changes so let's just add it nope react native ain't working wonderful let's see if we can what in the world is going on here Wait, just wait a minute, I'm just gonna open up the app again on my phone in Expo. Something really wrong seems to have happened with React Native here. I'm so really sorry. All right, let's remove that. Hit save. And there we go. So yeah, I'm sorry. I just have some error here with React Native, uh, the server on my computer. I'm not sure what happened. So yeah, let's continue from that. So you hit save, the component in mount method is then called, which will fire this API post, right? And as you can see here, we're getting the post on the webhook site. So this is the API endpoint, right? And you can see the headers here we're sending from the application. So the content type that we set, application JSON, accept application slash JSON. You can see the connection, close, X forward for uh, header user ag agent uh, and so on we don't have to care about this really and more importantly 
can now check the word wrap here and check format JSON. Uh, we can see the data we're sending to the API, right? So now let's also add a password. Let's say do. Hit save again. Open up here. And you can see we're getting a new request here. So click this request. And as you can see, now we're getting the username and the password. So we're actually sending some data to the API here. So now if you were in control of this API, uh, you would of course be able to perform some logic on these values. For example, save them in a database or something similar. All right, so that's how you uh, post data to an API with React Native. Also remember, of course, you don't have to do this in the component mount method. Normally you would have a button and a method called, for example, on button press which calls this method then, and then fires the API post, right? So yeah, that's it. Sorry for those errors, but that happens sometimes. So thank you. Bye-bye.